Good evening and welcome to the July 13th, 2015 meeting of the Town of Scarborough Planning Board. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Karen, could you please call the roll? Ms. Oglis? Here. Mr. Beely? Mr. McGee? Here. Mr. Mazur? Here. Mr. Fellows? Here. Mr. DuPont? Here. Mr. Wood? Here. Thank you, and uh, please note that with all voting members present, Ms. Oglis will be an alternate Thank you. this evening. Non-voting member? Next item is approval of minutes from the June 22, 2015 meeting. Move approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Shout to be unanimous. Thank you. Uh, just one note on the agenda for this evening. Item number eight, BBS Enterprises requesting site plan review for 62 Muzzy Road Asian Fusion, Asian Fusion Restaurant uh, is tabled at the request of the applicant. Items number four and five are public hearings and a public hearing and a companion uh, map discussion. Uh, we'll take the, the we'll take the presentations together and then we'll do a public comment and board discussion separately. <coughs> um, item number four: the planning board will conduct a public hearing to receive input regarding proposed amendments to zoning ordinance chapter 405, updating the Highgus Parkway HP district to allow for food processing subject to performance standards. And item number five, the planning board will conduct a public hearing to receive comment on amendments to the zoning map. The zoning map amendment proposes to change a portion of map and lot number R50, lot 34A, from general business district B3 to Highgus Parkway district HP. Would you like to introduce this one briefly, Jay? Um, actually, I think I'll turn it to Karen Martin, director of SEDCO, for the introduction. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. And I'm Karen Martin. I'm the executive director of the Scarborough Economic Development Corporation. And I'm here tonight to introduce the proposed um, update to the zoning ordinance, which would allow um, certain types of food processing um, to be conducted in the Highgas Parkway um, zone. And you're stuck with me tonight because Dan is still in Norway right now. He's on his way home. So if you'll um, tolerate me for the evening, I'll walk you through some of the zoning changes. Um, but first, I really wanted to remind everyone that, you know, we're always looking to uh, update the, the ordinance and keep current with what's happening in the economic development world and make sure our zoning ordinance has, you know, plenty of area for um, really the types of development that are occurring in the region. And, you know, it's not really surprising that we wanted to take a look at food processing um, simply because this region has really started to become a powerhouse with, with regard to food processing. The area received a federal designation um, last year. Uh, there is a, you know, probably 60 to 70 nascent, really brand new food processors. This industry is really ready to grow. And so when we started to look at how it might work here in Scarborough, really we only have the industrial park that's available for, for food processing. And when we began to look at the issue with the um, Long Range Planning Committee, we felt like not every processor needs or every per person who's doing food production needs to be in the industrial zone. Um, Haiga certainly has great appeal because of its logistics, uh, and we wanted to ask ourselves, should food processing in many respects be treated like we treat high technology? That under certain conditions, um, it really could be allowed in Haiga's Parkway as long as, and the Long Range Planning Committee was very clear about this, it must be consistent with the design standards. It must be of a higher quality than you would expect in the industrial park. So we really looked at that and said we toured a few places, we've seen some other examples of processing, and so that's really the, the view that we took when we looked at adding food processing as a use within the Highgas Parkway zone. We want to keep the integrity of the zone in terms of the look and the feel but we want to see if we can allow some food processing as long as they're willing to 
um, rise to the level of the, the standards that we set for them, and they have to meet certain conditions that they may not have to have, they may not have had to meet in the industrial park. So again, it's a slice no pun intended, of the food production industry that we think might really fit nicely in Haigas Parkway. And that's really what we've brought to you, to, you know, tonight is um, a change allowing food processing um, with some additional performance standards and with the condition that they meet all of the design standards and um, um, other standards that are consistent with the Haigas Parkway. So that's really the, the guts of the amendment. The one thing that's a little different, I think, this time is we're not, we didn't want to create a second zone. We didn't want to have Haigas Parkway 1 and Haigas Parkway 2. So we really wanted to limit the food processing, uh, food production um, uses really to the southern part, the part closest to the um, current industrial park. And in order to do that, um, the suggestion from our attorneys was let's do a distance. So what you see in the ordinance is instead of creating a separate zone, there is a distance from the intersection of <coughs> Scotto Hill Road and Heights. I believe it's about 2250 is the, the distance from the intersection. And it's not a complete radius because the Heights Parkway zone doesn't include the full radius. So it's only, you must meet both standards. You must be in the Haigas Parkway zone and within 2,250 feet of this intersection. So it does create sort of a, um, really the southern part of the zone, allowing the food production um, uses there. So the next piece that's, that's also part of this is there's a landowner, um, that really has a significant amount of property that's currently in B3. When we talked about doing the, the food processing, um, they came to the, some of the hearings or some of the uh, uh, discussion groups that we had, and they were very interested in looking at coming back into the Haigas Parkway zone. And we left it up to them. If they wanted to be in the Haigas Parkway zone, that's fine, we would do it as part of this process. And that's really what you're looking at in the map. This is the area that's formerly a B3. This area is in B3, and they will be moving into the Haigas Parkway district. And correct me if I'm wrong, I think at one point they were actually in Haigas Parkway. Um, so anyway, they are moving back to Haigas, which I think certainly makes some a great deal of sense with respect to that. So I'll stop now and answer any questions um, with regard to the change. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Um, with that, I'll open it up to any public comment. I just ask that uh, anyone who's interested in speaking on this approach the podium, give your name and address, <laughs> and keep your comments to five minutes or less. I will open the public hearing. Any takers? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. And we will turn to board discussion. Susan, would you like to start us off? Um, in terms of our truth, truth telling, I'm a member of the Long Range Planning Committee. So was part of watching and be part of actually bringing <clears throat> this uh, zoning change to the point that's at now. Um, all I'd like to do is just say again that this particular committee has got uh, has put together quite a process for making sure that before it comes to the planning board and the council, it's been what we would call fully vetted. So it, 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 it grows from the community and then it goes back to the, we, we work at it and come up with a suggestion, it goes back to the community sometimes two, three times, and then we work out what it is that seems to be the best for everybody and hope for the best. And this really seems like um, it's going to work really well in Scarborough. We're so well positioned for this, so I hope it goes smoothly. Thanks. Nick? Yeah, I, um, <clears throat> I don't have any major concerns about what I'm seeing here. I do have a quick question, though, if, if perhaps she might be able to help me. Um, and it relates to number four on the uh, number two here, under two section M2, I guess subsection four. And it's and this is just for my own personal knowledge. It says here, the facility will not create any unhealthy or offensive odor, emissions, or other airborne discharges. Is that actually possible? <laughs> because and my, my concern is actually 
the, the way the language here is written might actually prohibit, not prohibit, but impede an opportunity for a business to come in under that language. So more of my question is, is this something where the town attorney might be able to help clarify that a little? I would hate to see that be a barrier. Um, but maybe I don't know enough about True. the processing world mm -hmm. just because I just didn't like the way that portion was written. Well, I, I will tell you, I think in an mm -hmm. abundance of caution, mm -hmm. you know, to look at food processing within highest. I think our expectations are that um, everything is contained in the buildings, that you're really not going to be having um, odor or emissions of any kind. So you know, I think we've used the standard in the high technology section as well. Um, so it's possible that it's a very strict standard. Um, we've, we've sent this out to a couple of different people in the processing world, and they felt like it, it wasn't going to impede their um, production. But I think it's, again, an abundance of caution. We wrote the standards to be extremely uh, rigorous. Okay. As yeah, and, and that was my only concern with this was some of that language and whether it had been vetted through some of the mm -hmm. potential businesses that might come in and, and the, the town attorneys. Right. The but devil is in the details, so <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll find out. We'll find out, but I, I guess, uh, I, you know, I think the thought was, I guess we'd rather have more than less standards since we're crossing new territory with respect to having uh, food processing in the Highest Parkway. Okay, thank you. And Mr. McGee, I'll, I'll just also add, as, as Ms. Martin aptly put it, this is a bit of um, uh, an abundance of, of caution in mm -hmm. that this is standard, this language is actually currently in our performance standards, applies to all developments, so um, there's language very similar to this about offensive no, no, uh, noises and smells and that sort of thing. It was so, actually the word emissions. Um, yeah. I, yeah. It just seems like a yeah. very broad word. Yeah. And I would just chime in, I would just chime in <clears throat> deeply as well that um, part of the early um, intelligence gathering and sort of homework on this by planning staff and SEDCO, as I understand it from my involvement on the Long Range Planning Committee, and involved visiting uh, businesses that do this type of processing to get a first-hand sense of um, how they operate and how "quote unquote" clean they are, mm -hmm. and, I, and it was my impression that one of the big takeaways from that experience was that um, the types of businesses that might consider this district really are kind of next generation and you know That's not your grandfather's uh, food processing exactly. operations. So I think that kind of was part of what inspired that approach to the to the district. So yeah, and like I said, I'm comfortable. I just didn't want to make sure we weren't. Um, recommending something yeah. that could have been a bigger impediment down the road. Yeah. Good question. Thanks. Very good question. Ron? Yeah, I got a few comments and a couple of questions, Kellen. Um, first of all, <coughs> anything we can do to generate business on the Hagas Parkway, I'm for, because it's gone vacant for so long, and I think that's a key area for development. Um, a question. Do you have any food processing entities that have expressed an inter interest? Yes. Okay. And picking up on what Nick said, and which I think is a good point, Nick, are we eliminating fish and lobster processing plants with this issue? <laughs> you never know until you're in, 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 until the proposal is before you. However. Um, I will say that we ran the draft standards um, by a processor who said they didn't anticipate having trouble meeting it up. So, you know, we're trying to, it's a, it's a, it's a delicate balance. We want to do what's right for Scarborough and for the Highest Parkway. So we're trying to write the ordinance that uh, meets what we view Highest Parkway as. And we're taking this step toward allowing processing, but it's not an industrial zone. So um, right now when people look at the, um, you know, the general descriptions, we've been told, yeah, we think we can meet those. Devil is in the detail, as always. Okay, but I'm going to go on record as saying that I would be um, upset if we did eliminate that industry because 
if you read all of the articles which I have closely read in the last few months, the biggest need in the state of Maine is in that particular line of, right. of processing. And, uh, uh, and I, I still think that it would fit, in my opinion, uh, on the Hagus Parkway. Um, I wouldn't want it in other areas of Scarborough, but in that area, I certainly would vote for it as long as it, you know, came up to all the other, you know, pies. That's all I have. <clears throat> Thanks, John. Okay, I agree with Ron. Certainly uh, needs some development on Hagus Parkway, but I'm going to go back in the opposite direction on Mick, on the outer. Uh, what are the standards we have in place right now? If seriously, where are the oldest standards in town? How do we say, well, we don't want it because we built this facility and it's stinking too much? How do we stop it? How do we prevent it? Question for staff. We don't have sort of a defined. It's not defined. The language. I can, yeah. We don't have a sniff test. I shouldn't look that up myself for it. All right. That's all right. Put your scratch and sniff on the, pl on the plans. So I was looking that up. I, I seriously don't have a problem with this project, but if all of a sudden we've got a facility that comes in and it's very offensive to everybody, <coughs> how do we correct that problem? <coughs> if we don't have that in place, then I'm not <coughs> in favor of this change. Yeah, what we have in the performance standards is, well, it's actually for, it talks about an industrial district, so I, I may have overstated, it talks about no permit, uh, no permit shall be issued in an industrial district for any use which may be offensive because of noise or vibration, odors or fumes, smoke or dirt, or because of fire, ex fire or explosion or any other hazard or nuisance. So it talks about this odors and fumes, but it doesn't give real definition. So I'd say, as Ms. Martin pointed out, the devils would be in the detail when any application would come before this board. If that was one of the issues we were we grappling with, that we would take up those details at that time. So that's that's a problem I have with this, the way it's right now. We don't need a, what is the hot sauce, sriracha? We don't need a <laughs> that situation to pop up in... I mean, that's a detail I think we've, we're omitting here. I, we're, we're forget, you know, we need to pay attention to. And I'm totally for development, but at the same time, we don't need something we can't stop because of our ordinance. That makes sense? I'm all set. Thanks. Mike? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, I would echo the comments of Sue having uh, served on... Um, Long range, when it was known as CPIC, I know that you work very hard and <clears throat> you make sure that it's uh, quite ready for prime time before we get it, and this certainly appears that. You've done your homework. I'm just kind of curious about the 2250 from the intersection, what that really looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have a scale here, and, and then uh, a follow up would be uh, why. Sure. Um, I don't know, Jay, if you can do the, the length, but basically, um, it essentially runs up to about where the salt pump um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, climbing yeah. gym is going. That's est essentially the extent north, and it would run and include, oops, I just lost what I had before. It would include the parcel that's proposed to be changed into the Highgate Parkway sure. under number five, and then, as I said, it runs just to about to where the salt pump climbing gym is going. In. Okay. And, uh, and, and why? Why the uh, limitation? Well, sure. We looked at the entire uh, parkway, and at one point we did talk about um, allowing this everywhere. Uh, but one of the things that's happening is, you know, we've got the Gateway Square property that's already really under con uh, contract zone and was going in a different direction. There are a couple of other parcels that are really the gateway into Scarborough. Um, you know, in terms of uh, coming right off the highway. So we felt like, again, it's a little bit of an abundance of caution. Let's, let's define the area closest to the industrial park first. 
let's make sure that we're managing it well and that it is what we think um, you know, the food processing end of things is going to be. So we really um, took a look at that and felt like we were most comfortable with looking at the area closest to the industrial park. There was no magic. There's no magic. And we looked at several iterations of this. Um, and in fact, you know, we sent it back to some of the folks who were at the um, discussion section. And that really was their consensus as well. They felt like you know, it's the, the properties closest to the industrial park that make the most sense. And uh, so, so essentially, you, would, you, you don't want it at the gateway of Hagus Parkway, if you will. Even right. though you have, you have a, um, a note here that it's design and external appearance will meet our standards. It's true. That was, again, it, it was a, it's a tough situation to try to define where these, where these changes will go. And I believe the, the Long Range Planning Committee was very comfortable with um, leaving that part of the uh, uh, entry into the Hygus Parkway um, really toward more office development. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a question. I'm sure. sorry, Karen. Sure. I haven't been down to the Industrial Parkway for a while. Is there a lot of room for expansion and development? No, I didn't think so, but I just wanted to clarify that. <laughs> okay. So that just even reinforces what my attitude is. Okay, thanks. And that is one of the reasons why we're looking, you know, for other areas. Um, thanks. thanks. Thank you. Um, to, uh, to Ron's comment about wanting to maybe make it more permissive, uh, and and also the Mike's question about where on the Highest Parkway um, we would allow this. I, I think I can say that on the Long Range Planning Committee we really grappled a lot with trying to strike the right balance between opening up some new possibilities while trying to maintain what's already there, at least at certain parts of Highest, and with the recognition that there's some landowners and businesses that have sort of bought in, so to speak, under, under a certain, uh, a certain, re a certain uh, dynamic, mm -hmm. a certain environment, and that even though we certainly want to have these facilities look, uh, conform with design standards and have zero emissions and all that, there was still the sense that there could be a perception issue um, with having a food processor there or, or possibly coming in when you have other businesses that are maybe going in different directions. So in some ways, certainly having having processors at the exit 42 end of Hygus might be preferable because you've got easy on, easy off the turnpike, um, and you you do have some land available. But you know, I think there's really no perfect solution, but I, I think it was really trying to strike balance. Susan, did you want to add anything? I think one of the reasons, too, that the long, as when we first started looking at this at the Long Range Planning Committee, one of my biggest concerns was that's a nice straightaway and there'll be a lot of trucks coming through, which was not how we envisioned Hygis Parkway. But then when I was talk told the size of the, um, the size of the in each individual entity would be small, bail me out. Tell me, <laughs> tell me what we decided about terms of, in terms of uh, trucks. Just. I believe that the, we didn't put a limitation on the size of the truck. No, was... What I believe what, what we did discover is when we did work with some of the, um, we were working with a couple of the, the fish processors, and they weren't using large trucks, in fact. Um, so we didn't put a standard on the size of, of trucking. And one of the things is you're going to get, people are using that exit to get to the industrial park anyway. So it would seem challenging to put a size of truck limitation, you know, to the highest parkway. I wasn't way. thinking so much of the size of the truck as it is it's not going to be something that is going to have a large parking area full right. of large trucks waiting to be loaded and unloaded. It's not that kind of thing. Right. It's a small few trucks bringing in and leaving. Mm -hmm. And I think it's um, something that the, it will control the size of it, which means I think that you can control the appearance of it by our various standards. So I, I'm comfortable with the fact that this is a cautious but not overly cautious way of seeing if we can meet what is a very <coughs> definite demand and we're so well situated for it. 
Anyway, thank you. Thanks. I, I, I just feel you're, you're giving with the left hand and taking with the right hand. Uh, I really believe that because mm -hmm. if you're going to have a food processing, you're going to have trucks. If you're going to have any sort of uh, uh, brewery, you're going to have trucks. Uh, they can't avoid that. Right. So if we're going to put the language in on the left hand, I don't think we should be taking it out on the right hand. I, if, if you don't want them, fine. But but I think it's a. It, 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 but as it stands, we don't have. There's nothing in the language about trucks. No. I, I happen to agree with you, but I don't think there's anything Correct. in we there. We do not that, limit that. We do not. Right. Okay. So, Thank you. Thank, thanks, Ron. Um, so as you can probably gather, I, I support this. I think it's been well vetted, and it's a, a, a good attempt to um, strike a good balance. Uh, I, I definitely hear the concern about in, enforcement and sort of how does, I guess it's part, how does the board evaluate whether something is likely to have some kind of a nuisance effect and, and also part enforcement, you know, once it's built. If there is an issue, what do we do? I would argue that, that we could say that about most of what we deliberate over and approve. Obviously, there are some unique challenges with something like this, but I would say that those are things that, as is often the case with new ordinances and, and new zoning, that will need to be um, sorted out uh, as we go. And going back to the devil's in the details comment, um, so I, I think clearly there are some caveats that have been mentioned and some reasonable questions and concerns, but I. I think I'm hearing that the board as a whole is supportive of this. Absolutely. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll now turn to a public hearing for any comments on the zoning map amendment. That's right up there. Not seeing any. I will close that public hearing. Is there any separate discussion about the map in particular? All right, not seeing any. I think we're all set with this one. Good. And we'll look forward to seeing how it goes from here. Thank you, Karen. Item number six, Maine Family Eye Care requests a sketch plan review for 370 U.S. Route 1, Assessor's Map U39, Lot 44. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. As you just noted, this is a sketch plan application, so it's not a formal uh, presentation, but rather an opportunity for the board and applicant to have an informal discussion about uh, proposed uh, reuse of property, as we've just mentioned, at 370 U.S. Route 1, currently the home of Cliffs Antiques. Um, just for the board uh, to note, this, the underlying zone in this area is the B3 zone, which generally allows for this type of commercial activity. Um, one of the real challenges on this site, however, is not only its shape along Route 1 being a very narrow, uh, uh, not very deep, I guess I should say, uh, property, but it's also constrained by a stream protection overlay district as there's a stream that runs along the back portion of the property in close proximity to the building, making the building a non-conforming building to, uh, to the stream setback. Um, so there's some issues that the applicant needs to be aware of as they go through their review process. Um, may likely predicate uh, 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 a visit to the Board of Appeals as well as this board in terms of a site plan review, um, but that, well, that will be vetted as we go through. Um, in terms of site plan review, um, principally, uh, you know, as the applicant noted, there's really two elements that I think they want to get board's guidance on, among other comments the board may have, but principally with regards to site access and the treatment of the 15-foot uh, streetscape along the uh, Route 1. As board members will note, typically try to reduce the number of curb cuts um, along public ways where feasible. The applicant's requesting to maintain two curb cuts on this site, or at least consideration of that as it moves forward. And then the other thing that board members will note is there's a, an access drive um, that cuts between the building and Route 1 within that 15-foot setback, um, which is generally to remain a vegetated um, uh, green strip. However, there are provisions for the board if you find no other you know, reasonable alternative if the applicant makes um, some good, you know, gives you some other viable solutions that the board can't, could consider it. So I think those are two things I want, would like some direction on. Um, outside of that, Mr. Chair, I'd turn it back to you for your discussion. Thanks, Jay. And I will turn it over to the applicant's representative. 
Hi, my name is Kevin Downing. I work for Garmin Trojan Architects. Uh, myself, along with several other people in the office, have been working with the owner, uh, Dr. Mark Elkinson, uh, to develop this parcel. Uh, right now, I'm just going to turn it over to the owner to just talk a little bit about why he's moving here or proposing to uh, develop this parcel. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dr. Mark Elkinson. I've been a practicing optometrist in the city of South Portland for the past 25 years. I have, I'm hoping, at least another 25 years ahead of me at this point. And I've noticed over the past number of years that we've continued to expand in what we're doing in the city of South Portland. I've got a lot of patients here in the Scarborough area, and indeed what I've been trying to do is to consider looking at different alternatives to have a practice location that it can actually expand over the next few number of years. Uh, I do have patients currently in the city of Scarborough, so indeed it sounds like more of a central location that indeed uh, would make it easier for their access to get to my practice by Route 1 and certainly even by Route 95. Certainly giving us a larger parking lot, believe it or not, than I actually currently have in the South Portland area. And indeed what I've been trying to do, of course, is back in December of 2010, I've been in the papers buying this practice or this location itself, I'd like to see if we can potentially move forward to develop my practice into the Cliffs Antiques building area. That's what I'm hoping to do anyway, with your help. Thank you. Thank you. So as uh, Mr. Chase mentioned, uh, the site is uh, the, currently the Cliffs Antiques site. Uh, some of the existing conditions and site constraints, as also as Mr. Chase mentioned, uh, the stream protection overlay district, the stream does run very close to the back of the building currently, uh, which does put it in a nonconformance. Uh, the existing site layout, as is, uh, where the building, the existing building is, does not make it uh, convenient to uh, have parking on one side or in the rear or if, if, if you were starting from a clean slate, you wouldn't necessarily put the building where it is. Let's put it that way. Uh, that being what it is, uh, the building is there now. And our strategy going forward is to essentially uh, do no harm uh, or uh, not to increase any impervious surface or uh, encroach any closer to the stream in any way, shape, or form. Um, so what we've done... Uh, is, let's see, we've got two parking lots essentially, uh, one with two-way access on the southerly portion on Route 1, uh, double loaded, I think we have 14 spots there with one uh, accessible parking spot and then an access drive in the front of the building, which again is somewhat atypical. Uh, but again, because of the stream and the existing location of the building, really doesn't make it feasible to wind a road out back. Uh, and then to take advantage of the rest of the site, uh, we have a uh, curved parking lot, somewhat mimicking the extent of the gravel that is currently there, uh, and then utilizing the second curb cut again that's already there. Uh, we currently have proposed that being an exit only. Um, Another site constraint that is kind of driving that circulation pattern is the median that has been, that is in the uh, Route 1. You really can't access this curb cut over here on this side. Uh, so it, if we're going to keep that curb cut, it really can only be an exit. Um, so that is really a driving force in the whole circulation. Um, we do propose to, there's going to be no, I mean, we propose to renovate the building. We're not demoing or expanding the footprint or foundation. Uh, and as Mr. Chase mentioned, that is where the Board of Appeals may come into play with regards to foundation repair and then what we're doing to the facade. Again, we're not expanding anything, but there are two locations in the existing foundation that would require some repair. And the language currently in the Shoreland zoning is somewhat vague with regards to whether or not that would require a, uh, a Board of Appeals approval. Um, so I am looking for some direction on that. With regards to stormwater design, we absolutely would take a low impact approach. We're working with Jason Vafiades out of VED uh, Engineering. 
We haven't quite developed a, uh, a meticulous site engineered plan yet. That is the next step along our project path here. Uh, but the a couple thoughts that we have talked about are uh, draining to either a dry well or sheet flow into rain gardens along the end of the parking lots so that water can be captured there and slowly dissipated into the ground. Um, in the staff notes, uh, the sidewalk along Route 1, it was requested that that be uh, converted to concrete. We had uh, initially called that out as bituminous and that is, uh, I think, a, an acceptable uh, change and is consistent with your Route 1 or commercial district design guidelines. Um, and then, let's see, I also have the elevations too. So the building design itself uh, really doesn't change the shape of the existing building at all. It adds a couple parapets on either side. Uh, the idea is that the building would be divided up into two units, one being Dr. Mark Elkinson's uh, main family eye care uh, practice, and then one, a small, much smaller section, uh, being a proposed tenant uh, in the future. Um, the overall square footage of the building is, I think, 5,600 square feet. Uh, based on parking requirements, we would need 23. We are showing 26 right now with two accessible. Um, some of the materials on the building, a lot of it, it in, in appearance is somewhat contemporary and modern. It's not totally out of place in that the Range Rover building is directly across the street and uh, has shares some form and some material elements. Um, we, some of the trim is we're proposing to be aluminum or some sort of metal. Uh, the paneling would be drive it or, or perhaps metal also. Uh, stone veneer base, sto uh, storefront windows and door systems, and possibly along the back facade where you would basically not see anything ever perhaps do vinyl on that uh, facade to keep costs down. Um, yeah, I think that's all, and um, please review, and I'll uh, answer any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, would you like to start? <clears throat> sure. Thank you. Um, the, the setback areas, could you put your... Um, your plan back up there and just kind of <clears throat> point out with your pen. And again, I guess uh, the, the current building, it's not being enlarged, the footprint at all, that from what's current. That is absolutely true. Right? Bring up Mike around, please. <clears throat> Take care. That's the existing conditions, not that you can really see. Grab the it. handheld mic. Okay. Thank you. This is the existing conditions plan. No, you get turned on the bottom. Thank you. All right, how's that? That's definitely better. Um, so this is an existing conditions plan. The existing building is here. We would actually be somewhat reducing the building footprint because we're taking off this, uh, we're proposing to take off this little vestibule entrance right now. Uh, everything else, the limits would remain the same. With uh, We are, except we are, proposing to remove a bulkhead and a set of stairs here. Um, but in terms of building envelope and foundation, that would all be remaining the same in terms of extents. And the setbacks, sorry. The building setbacks are um, right here, this line, 35 feet from the front, and I think 15 everywhere else. Okay, so, uh, it's, so the current building is already within uh, what we prescribed for setback from Route 1, is is that what that is showing? It is already closer to Route 1 than it should be, yes. Okay. Now, as far as ingress and egress from, uh, I guess, uh, if I, from the southern area, the in and out, now, are you proposing that one can make a left turn and head southbound on Route 1 from there also? Yes. And, and is it conducive to do that? I mean, on that existing conditions, it looked like, I don't know, was it stamped concrete or something across the street or no? Yeah, 
Uh, there's, there's nothing there? <clears throat> I think is it's just a, Is that a turning lane or? Yeah. yeah. It's a okay. Lane. Well, uh, you know, I guess I guess at first blush, I I mean, I think improving that site is a good thing, and and this this appears to do that quite well. As far as the uh, circulation, it's going to be tight. It's a bit challenging in my view. Um, I I'm not sure how that left turn will work, but I'll I'll reserve judgment and and, and see the analysis later on. Um, if it doesn't, I don't know what your plan B might be, but. Um, I'm sure it'll work. You've already looked at that. I just, it just seems to me to be a bit busy right there, <clears throat> excuse me, asking vehicles to uh, queue right there and, and hope to make a left turn for uh, southbound on Route 1. There could be conditions that would make that pretty difficult to do. You mean here turning left? Right. <coughs> Correct. I, I, I don't, yeah, I, I don't disagree. I just would, I don't know what the alternative is to make a left. Uh, out of any of these spots, anywhere here. Uh, I work, I don't know if you guys know where our office is, it's impossible to make a left on a Route 1, like, a lot. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, we're not totally sold on the circulation pattern right now, and we are going to uh, confer with our engineer following this, uh, but this is the, what we've come up with, and we did explore several options before that, including two separate parking lots on either side, which simplified the internal circulation at the expense of creating two separate lots, one that is really inaccessible from one lane over here. Yeah. Um, no. Okay. Um, you mentioned uh, leaving space for um, a future tenant, but um, if I heard your, number, your parking numbers, that, you know, that might limit what you might foresee using that space in the future, unless you have another way to add parking. My parking numbers include this space as a uh, commercial uh, oh, okay. use. Right. Yeah, so we've included that in our parking calculations. Oh, good. Okay. I misunderstood. Very good. All right. Um, I think that's it for now, but uh, it's encouraging from my point of view. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. John? I agree with Mike. Encouraging. Uh, Looks like a good-looking, possibly good-looking project. Um, what was the question, Jay, on the 15 feet of green space? Yeah, we, so how, how short are we on that, I guess, is my question. Well, technically, we usually uh, it is measured from the right-of-way. Uh, as drawn, the green space is not even on our, on our parcel. It is in the public right-of-way. Okay. And so that is why it is uh, not typical. So, yeah. could, so the standard could we still do some landscaping in the right of way? So yes. So so okay. um, yes. I had a, actually a conversation with Mike Shaw, public works director, about that exact point. Um, sort of trying to get a sense of where does he see the road in any reasonable future going, and <laughs> and it's pretty blown out. There's four lanes, and there's the turning lane, so it's not going to get any wider. Um, so he, he was pretty comfortable that um, the town would probably be able to work with the board and the applicant, the board, you know. So it's nothing that's going to happen in the next 10 years or 15 years that the road's going to get widened. Right. So we could ask the, the tenant or the owner to do a little landscaping in that right away. That would. It wouldn't have to be yep. a lot, but just, you know. Yep, I think would that help. would be. I think Susan, I'm taking your thunder there, sorry. <laughs> I have a convert. Yep, Are you kidding? I'm, I'm, all, I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> yeah. I'm unclear. Are you tearing down the existing building or are you just renovating the existing building? We are renovating it. We are not tearing it down. We are repairing the foundation in two locations. It's a crappy building. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> I'll get technical on it. That's the problem. I know. <laughs> Believe it or not, there was some consideration at one point of even adding a second story. It, 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 very early on, uh, we did do a preliminary structural report on the building, and Sorry, that was not going to happen. Okay. Yes. Well, I hope you come in and really, you know, I, I see your pic preliminary pictures, but that building needs a lot of renovation, in my opinion. Well, I, I hope we can impress you. Um, the other thing, and I pick up with Mike, first of all, I'm, I'm very much in favor of, of redeveloping that area and uh, and uh, hopefully we can go forward with this and I'll be 
anxious to hear some of the specifics as we go along also. But uh, uh, I think you do have a challenge as far as traffic flow is concerned. And I, I would suggest uh, that we bring in uh, our, uh, our peer to take a look at how traffic flows in and out of that currently. I, I haven't heard of many accidents uh, going in and out of uh, the antique place. Uh, I may be wrong, but I don't know what the action accident rate is. Do you have any? Not offhand, but certainly that's something the applicant okay. would prepare as part of their formal site plan submission would be to have a traffic engineer do calculations, understand crash incidences, and those sorts of details. Yeah, currently, we have not we have not looked into crash in incidences there. Because I, I think that would go a long way towards what Mike and I both have <coughs> as far as a concern of, of that left-hand turn. Uh, so I would um, recommend that. Um, as far as the proposed curve cuts, I'm going to leave that in abeyance until I see the, the final plans and, and so forth and, and so on. And as uh, as uh, staff has said, uh, uh, I'd be curious to hear how the fire department is acting, reacting. I, I know that building was put up a long time ago, but ordinances have changed. Uh, uh, lots of things have changed subsequently. And so. Um, you know, definitely want to hear what the feedback is from the fire department as to what your plans are and their level of comfort with those plans. Um, everything else, I'm just going to wait for the specifics. And again, going on record as saying that I hope we can pull this off. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Ron. Nick? Yeah. Um, could you flip over the... I want to see that in the page. Thing? Yes. Thank you. Okay, I'm, what I'm, I was curious about was um, that you can't turn left in from coming from is it southbound, uh, go, or go heading northbound, I guess. That that way, uh, you said that the right turn out of your lot, with you know, it's a, a curb cut. It's only going to be a right only. Yeah. Is there any chance that somebody's going to try to make that left? And the only reason I ask is whether or not that's been a consideration, because it looks looks to me like it's close, like somebody could pull up on that lane and try to make that left into this curb cut that you're talking about? I would say that it is possible. Uh, in our current design, we've laid out the circulation so that you are in somewhat, you're hitting at the uh, an angle. You're hitting Route 1 at an angle. Uh, the lowest angle or the steepest angle that you guys allow as per your ordinance, 75 degrees, I believe. Um, so you are kind of going that way anyway in an effort to guide people only to making that right hand turn rather than the left. The other thing in place is trying to keep a tighter curb radius on that to prevent people from making that. But as, as it stands, other than having a sign that says no left hand turn, you, you could do it. It would not be easy in certain vehicles, but I, it would be possible. Uh, I was actually more worried about people trying to dive in there. Uh, if you have a one way and then people trying to take a take a left across the two lanes and into this on the back end, that would have been a concern of mine. Um, but I, I completely understand. If that's angled enough and you get some nice big red signs, you probably can prevent most of that most of the time. Through, um, we, we definitely plan to have some signage here regarding uh, mm -hmm. do not enter and uh, exit only. Um, there may be something else we can do to, to make that more clear. Cause I see what you're saying here, pulling exactly. it here. Yep. All right, well, um, that was just one area. You know, I think uh, my colleague said it all. Good luck. I hope, uh, you know, this becomes a very beautiful spot. And there's plenty of challenges here, but f for right now, what I'm seeing is obviously a huge improvement over what, what's existing there. So, good luck. Thanks, Nick. Susan? Um, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> It's just crazy. Um, I don't really have any, the things that are clear to me, I don't really have any problems with the um, landscaping going in the right of way. What the landscaping ends up being, I would like to suggest you need to get really creative. If you have a landscape architect on staff, fine. If don't find one. Because I'm a landscape architect. Good. Then I want to see something really <laughs> creative, and I know where to find you. This is an opportunity to get really creative landscaping-wise. Because, you know, we're trying so hard here in Scarborough to not look like everywhere USA. Route 1 is hopeless. What the heck? You can't make 
Route 1 in Scarborough look like with what they're doing at Route 1 in Falmouth. It's not possible. But it still needs to be looked at in a way that is coherent. So if we're not going to be able to do what the ordinance asks us to do, then we're going to have to get really creative as opposed to saying, oh, well, let's just throw something at it. Um, I'm concerned. I'm not concerned. I'm curious. It goes down a lot from Route 1. The lot goes down. Yes? Am I making this up? Uh, we do have some topo here. Uh, there is somewhat of a uh, slope down to the front facade here. After that, it's somewhat flat, level out towards the back. But there, there is a grade change between here and here, a okay. couple of feet. I'm just very, very I'm on alert to this sort of thing because I was on the board when Dunkin' Donuts went in. Hmm? Up here, Route 1? Ooh. We didn't catch it. So I just want to make real sure that that's all looked at in terms of it, it, there's a lot of traffic coming in and out of that um, there's a lot of traffic on Route 1 coming in and out of that traffic from anything that is not a really healthy managed dip would be um, something I'd be looking for. Um, the use of the other side of the building. I noticed that there are things that are highlighted in yellow. They could be very important. I don't know how that gets done, but because of the... This is only going to work if there's not a lot of traffic. This, this layout is only going... In other words, I would rather have you see two parking lots if, this, if what's going to be happening on the other side of this building is going to be asking for a lot of traffic, like a restaurant, which is allowed in this zone. Okay? It's not highlighted here. Medical and dental offices, professional offices, retail sales and services. I'm just saying that I think it needs to be looked at in terms of this is an unusual use for this particular spot. If you're going to have another piece of rental space available, what goes in there becomes important. I don't think we can say everything that's allowed in the zone. So you might want to take a look at that. Do you really want a restaurant down in there? If not, what can we do about it? Anything? Maybe not. And we need to look at it from that perspective, I think. But here's my big issue. I want to know a lot more about that stream. I parked the car and took a look, and that building is practically hanging over the stream. So what I want to know is, what is this stream? Where does it come from? Where does it go? It was running water when I was looking at it. So it's an active stream. And if, if you are doing something in this zone that is already not allowed, you're going to have to be very, very, very careful about what you do in terms of affecting it even more. I don't know about going to the ZB, the Zoning Board of Appeals. Do they have to do that? Um, I think... That's an ongoing discussion. We'll have to meet with the zoning administrator and understand the full okay. scope of what's going to happen. That's with what the I was going to ask. If we don't know, I'd like to make sure that we yep. do find oh, out yes. because it's it's not. I, I just expected a little dribble, but it's not. It's an actual reasonable size stream with some very high um, for these. Yeah, and it's it's wet. It's, it, it clung, the water comes up quite high. So I want to like to know where does it feed from and where does it feed to. I don't exactly know either. No, I don't need for you to tell me. This is a sketch plan. I just want to make sure. And then last but not least, we, are, uh, we this is the royal we, are not happy with, with the uh, exterior at all. No, it doesn't look anything like um, I think of what we were hoping for Route 1. I, I hope if that's really what the, what the materials look like, it's way too reflective, it's way too jarring. Um, I, I'd want to see whatever, an, an, a sample of whatever it is you're thinking of so I could get a real feel for what you're putting in there. Um, these little thingy dingies are just cute. That's, they're not in keeping with anything that's got anything to do with anything. Um, I don't see that this meets our, our uh, design standards, but I could be completely the only one. And I know the architectural firm for whom you work and you can do something a great deal more creative than this. So, since it's sketch plan, I get away with saying that. I would like to have you try a little harder, and I think it's a, it's a lot, it's very challenging, and you come up with some creative ways of dealing with the mechanics of it. But um, I want to know more about the um, stream and more about the, I'm not worried about the landscaping anymore, <laughs> but more about the architecture. Thank you. Thank you.
Um, I'll echo uh, one theme from most of all my fellow board members in that I think you're, at the very least, you're so far meeting your goal of doing no harm. <laughs> this is a, you know, a situation, obviously, where we have a, an, an existing non-conforming use. And I share Susan's concern about the stream, and that all kind of folds into that, obviously. And, and so I'm glad to hear that you're open to considering low-impact design and, and looking at different ways of handling um, water, and um, that you're at least around the margins reducing some of the impervious area. Um, so we'll look to see how that develops going forward. Um, I'll also pick up on Susan's comment about architecture. Obviously, it's just sketch, sketch uh, plan review, but um, you know, obviously, encourage you to you know, go back and revisit the design standards and think about um, think about how you might refine things uh, going forward. Um, and we'll look forward to seeing that fleshed out. Um, I'm also glad to hear that we seem to have a, a, a workable approach in terms of the, the landscaping. And coordinating with Public Works to, to use utilize that that right of way. So, um, with that, I won't belabor it anymore. Um, I think you pretty much know the drill in terms of all the things you need to do to develop a full site plan submittal. Um, is there any particular feedback that you haven't gotten from us that you'd like to have at this point? Uh, no, I, I'm a little concerned now about the the building design. Um, uh, in that we kind of went round and not round and round, but a couple iterations uh, with with the client, uh, the owner, to to arrive at where we did. Uh, and I would just say that much of what's driving uh, the building design, similar to the site, uh, are constraints. Uh, we'd like to not demo the whole building because. No, no, no. Oh, no. Excuse me, I don't think we need to get on and spend a whole lot of time with this. I mean, you can talk with staff about it because the kinds of things that we're looking for are the kinds of things that are written in the ordinances. It's more a matter, give you an example. <clears throat> is it Sullivan Tire? Yes, yeah, Sullivan Tire, which is a big tire warehouse. When you go by that, you don't know it's a warehouse because we asked it to not look like a warehouse. We just want you to do something that makes it look like it's a little more, read the designs. I want to say New England, but that's not even really it. But. Well, and I, I just want to say one thing about it. The, the New England, the idea, the pitched roof. Every Scarborough loves pitched roofs. And initially, of course, we kind of wanted to have some you know, something interesting with the roofs. Again, the structural report kind of prevents us from doing anything to that roof, adding too much um, in the way of adding any sort of gables or, or uh, any sort of interesting roof elements. So I'll just say that that's one reason why we don't have anything uh, really eye-catching going on with the roof. Thank you. Thank you. Item number seven, Go Green Landscaping, Inc. requests site plan review for 4 Royal Ridge Road, Assessor's Map U37, Lot 18. Jay? We need a little drum roll. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, let's see, as board members will recall, this item has been before you in a couple of iterations now. Um, this is really the third step uh, of a plan development review process. As you'll recall, the first step is a site inventory. Second step was a master plan. Uh, the board approved a master plan at your last meeting. Now the applicant is before you, as I said, for the third and final step, which is the formal site plan review, really getting into the nuts and bolts of the development and uh, all the details um, therein. Just make note that one of the items that the board is to consider as you look through the site plan is to find that the plan is generally consistent with the master plan. Um, staff has reviewed that and it seems fairly consistent in our estimation, but certainly uh, board members have uh, cause for concern. We, this would be the time to address those. Um, you have received uh, some comments from staff, Woodern and Curran, as well as Goral Palmer uh, doing a peer review uh, on traffic, and as I mentioned, Woodern and Curran doing the civil engineering review. In staff comments, we um, identified a, a host of items in terms of really the details, as we just talked about. This is really the, the details time. 
in terms of um, one item has to do with the keeping of commercial vehicles on the site. As we've talked about, this is being identified as a retail service, um, which uh, the type of activities the landscaping company um, are to be uh, conducted either indoors or in the outdoor storage space to be sure that those uh, items are, are uh, in keeping with that. Um, otherwise, it would be really more of a contractor's yard. Um, so that's an important element uh, for, for consideration. Um, other things that we flagged had to do with the landscaping. One of the provisions in the site plan review ordinance is that uh, for development of this scale that uh, landscape plans be developed by a landscape architect. It seemed that the plan was a little stark for the scope of project um, in terms of what the ordinances call for. Um, in terms of stormwater management, Woodern and Curran uh, did flag uh, request that the applicant really consider additional work in terms of water, particularly water quality on this site, given that the discharge is pretty close to the marsh. So the quantity of water isn't so much a concern, given that that's a, a tidal influenced area, but ensuring that uh, quality issues are, are, uh, are controlled. Um, see, a couple other comments with regards to the outdoor storage area, ensuring uh, the design standards seek to ensure outdoor storage is compatible with uh, the overall architecture and theme of a site. Um, those are sort of some of the highlights with regards to staff comments. Um, and with that, Mr. Chair, I turn it back to you for board discussion. Thank you. Um, before we turn it over to the applicant, I just wanted to briefly note um, that you know, based on my review, my understanding of kind of where we are with this, and reading the staff comments and everything that's been submitted made a lot of great progress. Um, I think there are enough details left to address, including a landscape plan, photometrics plan, and, and other items that are spelled out in the staff notes that um, we're probably not ready to consider actual approval tonight. But we'll, we, we'll talk about. That. But we would hopefully, um, hopefully, uh, and it's certainly up to the board. It's not not my call by any stretch, but. Um, uh, one one outcome might be that we sort of tee this up for as a consent item for the next meeting. Um, but with that, I will turn it over to the applicant. Great. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. My name is Lee Allen with Northeast Civil Solutions. I'm joined tonight by uh, with Mike Richmond from Custom Concepts Architects and Dave Malevsky from Go Green Landscape. Um, as Jay mentioned, there were several items that were um, brought up in staff review comments. Uh, I believe we've, we have addressed or, or can address every one of these items tonight uh, in front of you. We've talked to peer reviewers. We've actually had an email back from the traffic engineer today um, saying he was satisfied with the response from Bill Bray that was sent out uh, the latter part of last week. Um, also have met and discussed uh, the project with uh, Dave Sinise, the uh, reviewer for Woodard and Curran, and I think we're in agreement on the stormwater. Um, I'll also share with you the photometrics plan, which was unfortunately erroneously left out of the packet sent to you. The uh, locations of lights that were shown on the site plan are correct. The photometric plan didn't make it in there for a mistake on our staff's part. Um, we have a landscape plan as well, and, and we can talk through these things. I, I think um, we've, we've done enough to hopefully get a conditional approval based on staff review of these comments. With that, we'll, we'll just jump right into some of the comments. Oh, um, we also met with uh, Jim Butler, um, talk about some of the fire safety issues. Um, the one thing was that uh, we needed to add a fire lane around the back side of this. Um, we were able to do that and discuss that with him and, and pretty much have satisfied his, his concerns by doing that. So here's our site. The site hasn't changed. This is really pretty much the same you've seen at the past two to three meetings. Um, we still have the building here. All the vehicles are planned to be stored inside or inside this gated fenced area. And one of the details that's shown, um, chain link fence, that is not the intent. It's to be stockade fence. Um, the chain link detail was to show the swing gate. And what we're going to do is put the stockade fencing actually over and attach it to the swing gate because that's the, the best way to get this gate to operate. A stockade gate of that size would just collapse under its own weight. It, it wouldn't work. So there was some confusion there, but that's the reasoning behind it. 
Um, there's a question. We had some rear doors along the back of the building. Um, they are not required by code. They were put there because we thought it would be a good thing to do. Well, if you put doors to the rear by code, if you have doors to the rear, you need to connect them with a sidewalk. And we did not want to run a sidewalk all the way around the building. We were close enough on impervious that we didn't want to add more impervious. It's good would kick us into a frankly a state DEP permit, stormwater permit, something we didn't want to go through. Um, but we've eliminated the doors off the back, therefore eliminated the need for any walkway. <coughs> this is a landscape plan, very similar to where we showed screening on our site plan. Um, still a roll of arbor vitae down here at the bottom. It's been augmented by some shrubs, um, Slipping Viburnum and Spirea, as well as mixed in some spruce trees at the end, um, some perennials at this end. Similarly, we added a tree as you come in, some perennials around the bottom of that tree, um, some perennials and shrubs around future sign location here, or proposed sign location here. Um, this area up here, looking back towards the building, um, the east side of the building, added three maple trees, a spruce tree, and some shrubs around this area. And again, the screening back around the stockyard, um, added some shrubs, a spruce tree, and, and kind of broke up how that arborvitae was spaced out around the back of the building. Stormwater management. In our discussions, um, we understand that we need to meet um, some water quality treatment based on the post-construction stormwater ordinance that the town has. We are already proposing to reconstruct this ditch here. This green area, even though shown as wetland, it's a man-made wetland. That ditch was constructed in the mid-80s as part of this detention pond. This ditch and detention pond was part of this bigger subdivision that was approved back, I believe, is in 85 or 86. So as part of this project, we plan on clearing and reconstituting this swale and rebuilding this detention pond. That pond right now has a 24-inch pipe that outlets into the marsh. That's all there is. There's no control structure. So as part of our project, we're proposing to add a control structure there. And to get stormwater quality, we're going to uh, transform that pond into basically an underdrain pond. So these lines you're seeing here is um, adding underdrain is underdrain filter is a typical stormwater BMP that the DEP we use on, on many projects. We've done, uh, done so on many projects in this town. This is the photometric plan that did not make it into your packet. Um, the dark areas here show the lights. Um, property line is up here. You can't see it, but <laughs> no, there's, there's no increase at the property line. Um, you're going to have to take my word on that. Um, I think that's all for me. I think Mike is going to take a couple minutes to run through the, the building architecture, and, and then we'll open it up for questions. Good evening, Mike Richmond, Custom Concepts. Uh, my presentation is very short and sweet because, in essence, we really haven't changed anything. I will say that uh, since our last meeting, I've been working with David and a uh, general contractor and just starting to really work through some of the details. And very pleasantly surprised because a lot of the details that we're talking about for roof trim and stone and a lot of these exterior details that you really can't see from your seats but you'd see very well in reality, uh, are all supporting the whole barn-like feel of the design and very much in keeping with the design standards um, <clears throat> Scarborough. So I think I can, I can leave it at that, that we're very pleased that all those details are going the right direction. Happy to answer any questions you would have. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, before we go to the board, we do have the opportunity for any public comment. So if anyone is so inclined, come on up. All right, seeing none, we'll go to the board. And Nick, would you like to start? I suppose. Um, this popped into my head, and I have no idea if it has any any uh, pertinence to, to what we need to talk about here right now, but I'm going to ask it anyways. <laughs> the door is missing from the back. Is, do you have an egress issue for fire emergencies? If you only have one front door everywhere? No. Nope. On those retail spots? This is based on our meeting with uh, the town's fire code enforcement, uh, Jim Butler. He asked the question, why do you have doors back there? They're, they're not required. So you have one in, one out on those, those units? Yeah, given the classification of the building and the size of them, not necessary. Who am I to argue with the fire department? Okay, so, yeah. Anyways, I, I was curious. Um, it just seems strange. Okay. Um, outside of that, um, of course, I would prefer to have everything in front of me before, you know, I'm asked to give a final approval on something. Um, as you have noted, though, this is probably the third time you've seen this. Um, I like the design. I think it's a, it's, a, it's an attractive looking building. Um, I think it's going to be good for the area. In general, you know, I would be I would be comfortable if the if my peers were comfortable. If if this gets delayed another three weeks, then my apologies. But without having every piece of material in front of me for a review, it, it does become harder. But I'll leave that up to my peers to get a sense of where they're at on this. Thanks, Nick. <coughs> Susan. Well, I'm not really sure exactly where we are, to tell you the truth. I, I hear what you're saying in that everything that's in this uh, June 29th, I mean, the, the uh, site comments from staff yep. comments can all be addressed. Yep. And you supposedly have all addressed them here this evening. Well, I'm not sure what the, where we are with landscaping. Um, you're going to... I, mean, I don't, again, I don't see, if I missed it, the updated one with the, where you're going to be adding something to the Arborvitae down below. Mm -hmm. No, it, it's a plan that it was just recently done. Okay. That's why you don't have it. it it's, it's more presenting. And as, as my understanding is part of what we present, it all goes into the record and is part of our approval. Okay. I just want to make sure that this is, it's been a while since I've done it. So I want to make sure that we're doing this the way we always do do it. We don't have to have it all written down before we give preliminary approval, right? That's what we're doing is giving preliminary no. approval. Or site plan, there's no preliminary. There's, there's just approval. Just approvals. So it's, Period. you know, as, as um, staff that will act at the discretion of the board, <coughs> depending on the level of detail. And if we're going like to do. consider doing that, I would like to have one of the conditions be that we actually see the landscaping plan. Sure. This is, after all, a landscaping company. I mean, that's the obvious, right? Mm -hmm. I had to say it. Landscaping company. So do us proud, okay? A little, a little Arborvitae does not a landscaping company promote. So I just want to see more. And I think that they've got the idea, but... So is that something that you would want the board to see? Because, you know, if you want the board to see it, I think that's where the notion of the board has used this consent item. As a way for I, the board to I think that I can trust staff to okay. do this. If staff doesn't wants any um, outside help, you can always call me. Can, <laughs> I ask, can I ask a question? Can I ask a question, Lee? And I'm not I'm not trying to be glib, no. but, I, but I think for the benefit of of, of all of us, um, given the if if we were to grant final approval tonight, it seems like there'd be quite a few conditions, some right. of which are, you know, the, the some of which maybe go beyond what we typically have. <laughs> Or conditions um, in I, terms of the amount of work and coordination involved what is the real benefit of it, it, it's having a that big benefit to us um, we've already had our parks and sale agreement extended twice I believe our the next extension ends on July 30th um, that's, all. that's all they're allowed there, there is no more after that and, and I didn't want to bring that up because I don't want to put pressure on the board to say, and, and I've seen this happen before, where that that doesn't make or break it one way or the other, but I can tell you that's where we're at. We're, we've extended twice. There's not going to be a third time. 
So if we can do this through conditions, it would be very beneficial, I think, to the applicant and hopefully the town with a, with a decent project. I mean, you're right in that we, we don't generally like being put in that position, but it is helpful to, to understand that context because at a certain point, when you have a certain number of conditions, by the time the thing is actually really fully approved, you've gone another three weeks anyway. So I wanted to make sure we understood. Yeah, and, and I'm hoping that that's not the case because we've already done the work. It's just a matter of having the work looked at and, and reviewed. Okay. Thank you. Susan? Yes, but if, it was that, if the timing was that close, to wait until tonight to tell us that you have the answers to this as opposed to putting it in writing, you know, I mean... But we got the comments last Wednesday. I'm not going to get involved in that. I'm, I'm sorry. I take that. I take that back. I would. I don't care about whether this happens with conditions or not. But I do want to make sure that everything that's on the staff comments is covered one way or the other. And then if we have to sit here and go through them one one by one, I would prefer not to have to do that. But that may be what we're left with. Because I do understand the applicant situation. I don't want to ignore it. I would like to be able to help in any way we can. But we have to be in. We have to be consistent for one thing. Everybody has to be treated the same, and that's important to me. So, mm -hmm. if we're willing to put in our time to, make and I will say we've we've, and I'll certainly let the rest of the board weigh in, and we'll see where we come out collectively. But I think we've we've been. It may sound weirdly worded, but I think we've been consistent in occasionally Not being, being a little more flexible <laughs> under certain circumstances within, within reason. Yeah. I mean, we, there is some precedent for yeah. ending a little yeah. bit, but I, I completely agree with you. I think, you know, we've both been on the board a long time and seen a lot of these. And, um, and I know I, I work in the, in the industry and timing's always, time's always of the essence. And, well, let's stop talking about it and do uh, it. Right. <laughs> All right. Ron. Yep. Um, <laughs> I'm probably the most progressive member on this committee, but this one is a tough one for me, Lee. I mean, and hearing what you just said as far as pinning us in a corner, uh, that's not to say that I'm going to be negative, but it does put a lot of pressure because I have questions mm -hmm. based on uh, what Wooden Cohen had wrote and uh, and what Stafford wrote, and let me start throwing some of them at you. Um, one of the would, and I know you've seen this, but I want it for public record, uh, that wouldn't come and said that uh, uh, there's going to be utilities installed, uh, and they want to know how that's not going to impact wetlands. It is okay. unclear how the, yeah. this utility will be installed without impacting wetlands. I'm sure. So, so that's something that we've talked about from the beginning. That swale and that pond, because they're man-made, do not count as wetland impacts. They were already there. They are already utilities. They were utilities as they were presented in 1985 as part of that subdivision plan. Okay, but my rebuttal to that would be this is, a, this is dated July 8th, which is just a few days ago, and they're still asking that question. Um, then another statement that they made, was it does not appear that snow storage locations have been specified. Okay, so again, we have future parking that we're showing all over the place. Those areas are perfect places for snow storage. Those are not needed right now with this use. Those parking spaces are needed down the road, so that, that's a, a substantial area on this plan, not to mention the, the areas adjacent to the road that circles around the back of the building. There's, there's a tremendous amount of snow storage area. Okay. Next, and their comments, do you have letters from the Portland Water District and the Scarborough, the Scarborough Sanitary District? Okay, so the letter from the Water District we should have within the next week. The Sanitary District, it's before the Board of Trustees on Thursday night. Okay, again, based on the general discussion we're having, those would be conditions. Mm -hmm. Okay, just so that's understood. And, and that's that's fairly typical. Um, some of the comments from staff now. Um, 
And I would like to ask you this. They're talking about a stockade fence. In your opinion, does that go along with the architecture? Because that was one of the inf inferences. Well, uh, without seeing the details, it's certainly a lot better than a chain link fence. Yeah, I um, agree with that. So, you know, I, you know, um, certainly they've put a lot of effort into architecture, and um, you know, if the board, again, it, at the discretion of the board, if that's a detail you're interested in seeing, um, I think that's where where we have the consent item. If not, then staff can work with the applicant to work towards an agreement. And if we can't, then it would have to come back to the board. Uh, for resolution. <coughs> okay. Uh, then getting back to the outdoor storage, uh, comments from staff is the standards call for areas of outdoor storage. You may have mentioned this, but I missed it. The standards call for areas of outdoor storage to be designed as an integral part of the site, landscaping, and architectural plans, and are to be screened. Therefore, staff echoes our statement above about the utilization of additional landscaping to enhance the buffering of this area, which I think goes along with what my colleague Susan right. had was implying. So, so when I quickly ran through the landscape plan, we talked about originally an arborvitae screen around that. We talked about augmenting it with spruce trees and additional shrubs, viburnum and spirea shrub type shrubs. And also can I mention that behind there, there's nothing but 600 feet of wetland and tr forest anyway. Okay. Um, I guess where I stand is that, well, and again, I hate to be put in these situations. I really do. But I also appreciate the significance uh, of the timing here and would not like to see the applicant uh, have wasted a lot of time and money because of any delay, but I guess where I stand would be uh, that uh, I would give the provisional go-ahead with the conditions, uh, but that the conditions be well laid out. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ron. John? So I kind of, Ron, covered everything I had pretty much in mind. I'm not sure we can write all these conditions tonight, can we? I did <coughs> take a very broad Broad, 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 broad. Actually, I've got a question with you guys. Is what do you, do you need an absolute approval from us? We need a, an approval with yeah. conditions, yes. And, and I think it could be as simple as saying to, to meet the memorandums that have already put out before us. I think that's a very simple way to deal with all those issues. That's, okay. that's one of the options on the, that could be on the okay. table for the board to consider, absolutely. And uh, isn't it required, and I brought it up and you kind of ignored it, I think, Required to have sidewalks. So, one of the excuse us, we have a spider interrupting the proceedings. <laughs> Bit odd. Um, so, uh, yeah. So let's see, sidewalks. Um, those are. Let's see. Um, what the standards call for is al allowing for um, pedestrian movement and al uh, and alternative modes of transportation. In terms of sidewalks, uh, we didn't really flag that in staff comments anyway as a, as a major issue. Given the uh, scope of development that's recently occurred and any town plans for future sidewalks in this area, they're not existent. Um, board members may recall when the, uh, uh, the family medical center at the intersection of Route 1 mm -hmm. and, uh, and um, Royal Ridge went in. With all the recent work that's been done in Route 1, the Haggis Parkway, the town did a host of uh, sidewalk extensions mm -hmm. and expansions, and this area wasn't identified for that. Um, and so we haven't had this area keyed in. One thing that the board has done, if board members are so inclined, is in areas where there's not currently plans or, or really any future vision at, at the present time for a sidewalk, um, is the potential to maintain at least a, a pedestrian easement on a par parcel to allow for the potential development for sidewalks should the town in the future, whenever that time may come, uh, be so inclined. Okay. Um, but given that uh, Route 1 that isn't set up for sidewalks, I didn't flag Royal Ridge as being a... Uh, okay. I'm just thinking other development possibly yep. in that 
beyond your piece of property and below, I'd be happy with an easement. Would that be an issue? <coughs> Versus you having to build a sidewalk at this point, an, an easement possibly in the future. If you got a retail behind you or I guess it would be west of you, further up Royal Ridge and I, I, other internal. Yeah, I, I guess my only point is I remember having a discussion when we were talking about the whole master plan about pedestrians mm -hmm. in this area, and, and I think it was fairly well discussed that this area didn't make a lot of sense because there, I don't know where you'd go. You know, even if there was all this area all the way to the marsh across the street, where, where are you going to go? But if it's if it's a matter of okay, let's dedicate some space for this. If this could come up in the future, that's something that I'd certainly. Talk I, about. I think we should. I think we've had some cases in town. Uh, one that's coming up later on. That the town gave up an easement uh, that we probably should have had. So I'd like to see that as a condition. I don't think anybody else agrees with me on that or not. We, we're talking now. We're, you know, we're talking. 30 years from now, something could happen. If we don't have that easement, then obviously we don't have any opportunity to put the sidewalks there. So, so yeah, I think one. Where I'm sorry. Where where exactly would we be talking about sidewalks? The easement on Royal, whatever. So yeah, I mean, as I and I haven't looked at this detail. Um, you know, typically where we've sought an easement is where. Um, the town infrastructure is tight within the right of way. I think, you know, to your point, um, you know, just tr I'm, tr I'm trying to look at the detail based on the plans that I have on the computer before me is understand what the, um, <coughs> what type of infrastructure the town currently has in Royal Ridge. Could a sidewalk be fit with, within that right of way without need, the need for the easement? Um, if that were the case, you know, typically in those type of, in, you know, um, again, that doesn't necessarily address the construction of a sidewalk at this point. But, uh, you know, I guess uh, I don't have enough detail right now to know if, we, if an easement would be warranted or not. Um, and so I guess, you know, the sort of broader question is, you know, or the short-term question is, is the development of sidewalk something the board wants to see with this? If that's not the case... Um, it may be the exploration of let's take a look at what's within the right of way. Would a sidewalk fit within the existing public right of way? Given that um, Royal Ridge really isn't going, the, ex the extent of Royal Ridge isn't going to expand much beyond what it is given the configuration of the lots out there. Um, Do you think there's probably enough in the town right away now if that was possible? It looks like there may be, but I, can't, I don't want to, I can't commit to that, certainly. Um, Overall, like the project. I mean, just certainly to move forward, there's certainly a lot of conditions. I agree with Ron. I don't like putting them in this spot. So if we can come up with something conditional to help you move forward, I'm all for it. Thanks. Mike? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, on the building design, the, rear, the, uh, the lack of doors, so what we have in front of us, of course, is accurate to the extent that those doors will will not be constructed. So I was going to ask you, um, I'm just kind of curious, would you, you, would you put a window back there, like an egress window of some sort? Well, that's a good question. We haven't discussed the addition of windows. That's, but that wouldn't... That's something we could discuss. That would be something you can always do on your own and... Correct. For an enhancement, yeah. Correct. I mean, I, I like the design of the building. Um, I think um, I've watched it uh, different iterations but uh, I've generally liked it, and I, I like it now. And because I like the building, I don't, like, I don't want to hide it with too much landscaping. <laughs> um, plus, um, its location, as far as I can see, is not something that folks are really going to be able, unfortunately, appreciate as they travel up and down Route 1. Um, so I'm good with your landscaping. Um, I, as far as sidewalks go, I think you already shown, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jay, but I thought I already saw that you showed uh, connectivity in your plan development. We and did. I think um, that's where folks might walk from one locale to another. I don't think they'd agree. really be up and down Royal Ridge. I, I already agree. So I, I'm satisfied in that, with that component. Um, I, I looked at the memo, and certainly... I, who am I to refute any of what's being said here? And you're not either. 
In fact, you're quite the opposite. You're, you're telling this board that you are either very close to me in these conditions or have already met them. Correct. So um, I'm going to I'm going to say that uh, we should move forward and we should uh, um, uh, uh, provide final approval tonight. And I know that it's a challenge putting all these together, but uh, as someone already mentioned, often we do you know meet all the conditions on memo dated such and such, and uh, and these are the folks that are going to be challenged by that much more so than I. And then I think of myself three weeks from today, you coming back. And I envision you're just going to come back with letters attesting to everything you've told us tonight. Exactly. And I'm going to feel um, that we've wasted each other's time a little bit. So, so I like what you've done, and uh, I'm in favor of the project, and hope we can move forward to the final tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I don't think I need to repeat or belabor things too much more. Um, I think we've ended up at a at a good spot here. I really like the way the building looks. I think, um, I think we ended up with a, a good outcome in terms of the orientation and the, the design. Um, you've been very responsive to all the comments throughout, and you're well on your way to addressing the, the few loose ends. Um, it is always tough to see things for the first time on the night of a meeting right. and then also be asked to, to give approvals. Um, but as we've discussed, um, you know, I think under the, under the circumstances and based on all the discussion that we've had as a board, I think there's, a, there's clearly a general agreement that we're comfortable in, in considering approval with, with some conditions. And since we have planning staff who are prepared for any eventuality, we <laughs> do have <laughs> some draft conditions here um, that I will do my best to try to articulate as part of this motion. Um, I'll move that. Uh, Planning Board grants site plan approval, final site plan approval to Go Green Landscaping, Inc. for a site at 4 Royal Ridge Road, Assessor's Map U37, Lot 18, with the following conditions. Prior to issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall provide revised plans to address all comments identified in planning staff, Woodard and Curran and Girl Palmer, Palmer's review memorandums, pay traffic impact fees, Execute and record the maintenance agreement as required by the post-construction stormwater infrastructure management ordinance. Submit a letter of approval from the Scarborough Sanitary District and Portland Water District. Second condition. That was all one condition. Moving right along. Sub-items. And you'll obviously get a copy of this. A pre-construction meeting is required before start of construction. The meeting shall include appropriate town staff, the developer and his contractor, and utility company representatives, if applicable. The pre-construction meeting may be scheduled in coordination with the senior planner. That is the motion with conditions. Second. So we have a second. Any discussion? Just a thought. <laughs> you right. almost made it. You almost uh, made it. Oh. Just a thought. All right. That qualifies. Is there... there not, not to, um, is there any type of provision we would be comfortable with where Jay felt he was in a position or staff was felt they were in a position that something wasn't being satisfied that gives them the ability to bring it back before the board? Is that impl isn't that implicit? Is yes. it implicit? It, I mean, it's why. implicit that you okay. ultimately, right. if that we can't then. come to a resolution, it would it, come it back to this board anyways. for okay. yeah. they don't the want, They don't want to be responsible. Okay. <laughs> okay. That was it. Thoughts are allowed. Mm. All right, so we have a second in motion on the table. Any other discussion? All in favor? So that's be unanimous. Thank you. Okay, thank Except you. Lee, don't do this to us again. You've been in front of us we'll, many we'll times. The doors on you. <laughs> All right, we'll let you get by this time. <laughs> item number eight, as previously noted, is tabled at the request <coughs> of the applicant. Our next item. Number nine, Risbera Brothers Construction Company requests preliminary subdivision review for an amendment to the Theber subdivision for the addition of seven new residential lots, Assessor's Map R40, Lot 1. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as you just noted, this is for a subdivision off of, uh, at the end of Memory Lane. Um, as board members will recall, this item was before you in March for a sketch plan, and we actually conducted a site visit, I believe it was at the very end of May, if I'm not mistaken, on this site. 
Um, in terms of zoning um, issues, the 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 property uh, is with within the R2 zoning district. Given site characteristics, it is required to go through the conservation subdivision design review criteria. One of the sort of critical elements in an R2 subdivision is ordinance generally seeks to have R2 subdivision served by sewer. Um, board members will recall this was really sort of the extent of our sketch plan discussion, or quite a bit of it. Um, the provisions do allow for the board to enable R2 subdivisions uh, to go forward that aren't connected to sewer, provided the board finds there's no reasonable alternative, essentially, is the language. Um, and the applicant has had um, in their materials have talked about the approach they've taken. I know um, I'm sure they're prepared to talk through that again this evening. Um, so just something for the board to keep in mind. Um, staff generally comfortable that they've taken all reasonable approaches, uh, but if board members have issue, um, now would certainly be the time if they want to see other areas explored. This discussion would certainly be the time to raise that. Um, Let's see, another item that was raised during our site uh, walk was consideration for potential noise abatement uh, given the uh, proximity of the turnpike to some of the parcels and the, uh, obviously, you know, with lot development, there's going to be trees removed um, and clearing. Um, so just wondering what, what, if any, consideration has been uh, talked about in there. Um, you will have received a, a comment uh, memorandum from Winter and Kern, our civil engineers. Uh, they had some comments with regards to uh, stormwater, particularly quality and quantity of stormwater from the site. I will note that during our interdepartment review, uh, Mike Shaw, Public Works Department, also expressed um, some interest in really understanding sort of the scope and magnitude of the project, um, given some downstream concerns he's aware of at the Payne uh, Road uh, crossings. Um, let's see. We have sort of a host of other comments, but one thing I, I do hope the applicants are prepared to sort of uh, highlight a little bit further, particularly for staff, <laughs> and I imagine the board is really understanding um, the treatment of the lots and the setback areas at, at the back of the lot with the intersection with the open spaces. Um, um, they, they're seeking to have a 15-foot building setback coincidental with a 25-foot wetland buffer, um, so some further discussion around that. One thing I will note is that in an R2 subdivision, uh, again, um, of this characteristic, they are required to have 40% of open space. Um, they are proposing, I believe, the number is 54% of open space. Um, so based on what I was able to read in the applicant's narrative, uh, there seemed to be some room that made some sense there. I just couldn't quite see what they were talking about on the plan set. So. Um, do have some other comments for board consideration. I'll leave leave that for the discussion. One thing I do want to note is uh, we did have comment from uh, Marla, Captain Marla St. Pierre at the police department who had expressed that there was hearsay or urban legend potentially of a potential burial site on, on the property. Um, you should have a, an email in front of you from Captain St. Pierre. I think it was maybe Friday or throughout the weekend she sent it in. She spent some time on site with the applicant doing a whole bunch of due diligence, and she's fairly comfortable at this point. They've done all they can and have not identified any burial site. So um, that issue no longer seems to be um, as pressing. But with that, I'll turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Jay. And I'll turn it over to the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Nancy St. Clair with St. Clair Associates. I'm here tonight uh, to present to you the second amended subdivision for the Thaburge subdivision. This was a project that was originally approved in 2002. There was a very minor change in 2003, basically some mathematical changes on one of the property lines. Uh, but at that time period, uh, the original section of Memory Lane was constructed. There are seven homes on Memory Lane right now. This project is on lot 8 of that original subdivision. So uh, in the notations on the 2002 approved plan, there was a clear notation that this <coughs> lot was reserved uh, by the developer, Linda Thaburge, who currently owns the property, uh, for a future subdivision. And so we're here tonight to talk to you a little bit about that. Uh, as Jay had mentioned, we met with you folks back in March to talk a little bit about it at sketch level. And we did have a site walk with a number of you in the end of May. Uh, 
Uh, so a little bit of discussion about the, the parcel itself. Jay, if you can zoom back out, if you would, on that particular <coughs> image there. If you look at our plan, you can see sort of the highlighted area at the end of the existing uh, memory lane. Memory lane ends in a hammerhead right now. And what you'll see on that cover sheet is the sort of the scope and the size of the actual lot eight. Uh, it is a very sizable lot. It has a long uh, extension of it, if you will, that goes past this sort of zoomed in image that we have on the color rendering. Uh, there's a dividing line on there, which is actually a drainage easement for the main turnpike authority. That shows up uh, sort of midway of the parcel. And for reference, that's that line that shows up on our sort of zoomed in color version that's here uh, on the board before you. So there is a sizable piece of uh, the property, which is on the sort of northerly tip of the site, uh, that would be included as part of the open space. The open space does extend actually southerly of that drainage easement, as you can see. The darker areas that are shown uh, on the color rendering are mapped wetlands that were on the site. We're not sure. There may be some uplands in that tip on that northern end, uh, but for the purposes of our evaluation, we basically stopped it uh, where we had uh, encountered the wetland limit that basically crossed the entire parcel. So as you can see from the plan, we're proposing to extend memory lane. Uh, there's about, 500 and, about 558 feet uh, extension. We would end in a hammerhead, similar to uh, the original section of memory lane. In the original notation uh, for the subdivision, that hammerhead that exists right now at the end of the paved section of memory lane uh, was noted that um, once the uh, Public Works Department were done with it, it when the road was extended, uh, that that would be uh, able to be removed, provided that we had, Jay had suggested that we have some discussion with the homeowner who owns the lot on which it rests. And we did speak to the homeowner. Uh, they would like to have it removed. That area is surrounded by wetland. We are proposing to uh, take that area out. It had been, I believe, probably originally filled uh, as part of the construction of the hammerhead, so we would be removing it and restoring that area back to the surrounding grade. Uh, using the <coughs> wetland uh, hydric soils uh, that we would encounter as part of our extension of the road, we would use that as topsoil to uh, allow the, the regrowth of a wetland uh, in that area of the original hammerhead. So as I mentioned, we are proposing to extend memory lane to come up in. If you look at the, the color rendering, we are proposing uh, seven new homes on this extension. The existing wetland provides a, sort of a natural buffer between the new homes and the existing homes on memory lane. Those of you who walked uh, the site with us, we walked down the center line uh, of the proposed road. Uh, and you can see, sort of highlighted in purple, the proposed areas of wetland impact associated with the uh, construction of the road. We have a couple of crossings that are necessary for that. If you'll also note on that first lot, lot number one uh, in our subdivision, we are proposing to fill a finger uh, of that wetland that comes up sort of in a spike orientation, if you'll see on that plan, um, in order to allow a little bit better uh, lot layout for the house on that uh, parcel. When we were before you folks back in March, we had some very preliminary soils information, but there had not been a detailed evaluation for test pits for passing soils on each of the lots on the subdivision. That did happen after we met uh, with you folks and included in the application materials are test pit logs uh, showing that each lot does have a passing septic system location uh, on it. On that particular lot, it would be uh, to the beh to behind the house that's shown on the on the plan. These houses are shown schematically at 30 feet deep by 60 feet wide, which is a typical footprint sizable enough to have a garage and a main house uh, associated with it, and is is the scale, if you will, anticipated uh, as part of this subdivision. So we placed each of the homes on uh, each of the lots in a representative location, just as sort of a generic box at this point. But it does give you a feel for the layout and how we uh, anticipate homes would be uh, laid out on the property. Most of them do face the proposed extension of the road. The only one uh, that is a little bit different from that is lot 14, which you'll see is sort of tucked back in. Uh, there is a driveway that comes up for that. We do have two proposed small crossings of wetlands in order to uh, provide access to that. 
we spent a great deal of time sort of looking at is there a better route uh, for that driveway in order to be able to get to that home location for that. And unfortunately, uh, with the configuration and the um, allowable locations for driveways, we really don't have much of an option uh, for that. We can't come in off of the end of that hammerhead to put in a driveway coming up to that. So it does make sense for us to do uh, as we have there. Uh, on the uh, layout plan, you'll see that we are proposing to have that upland buffer that we talked a little bit about, Jay mentioned earlier in the introduction. The, as I mentioned, the wetland areas we're assuming to be that sort of whole tip up in that area. That area is um, approximately 9.66 acres that we would be setting aside as open space. With that open space, you'll see on the plan, the wetlands are very jagged. They're sort of, you can see the dark green lines. They're sort of a, an odd shape in that area. I think some of the confusion that shows up on your plan is when you do a design <coughs> to typically create property lines, you don't follow property lines along a, an edge that's that jagged. So we tried to make straight lines in, in locations, but tried to make sure that we provided at least 25 feet of an upland buffer uh, associated with that. So that line that you see on this plan, we've colored it in at more of a uniform shape. And so what happens is you have areas that are well in excess of 25 feet, for example, But we've shown graphically that we have at least 25 feet on a uniform strip. As Jay mentioned, our proposal is that we have that 15-foot side yard coincident with that 25-foot upland buffer. The remaining 10 feet is outside of the property limits and would be within the area set aside for open space. So that's upland. It's at least 25 feet. But as you can see from this plan, those lighter green areas are uplands. They're in the open space area, so they are included uh, as part of what, what would be a, a minimum of a 25-foot buffer. So I don't think I explained that very well. We can certainly go back to that if you want, but uh, if you do have any questions on that. But the intent is to provide at least the 25-foot upland buffer along that area. And I do apologize. The original plan was a bit confusing in that area, and hopefully graphically that helps to explain a little bit uh, with regard to that. So <clears throat> a couple of things that we wanted to talk to you about with regard to design elements. Uh, we are proposing to extend the road in very similar fashion to the existing uh, road section. That section is not curbed. It is a public street. Uh, it has ditches on either side. And at the end of the existing uh, road, there are two uh, level spreaders that discharge the ditch flow out into those wetland areas that are uh, between the original homes and our proposed new homes. Our proposal for the extension of the road would follow a similar fashion. We would propose roadside ditches along each side, no curbing, very similar to the original uh, section. And we have proposed two level spreaders at the end that would discharge out and go into those upland buffers before they entered into the wetlands at the end. The high point in the road is, is relatively close to uh, the end of the existing um, memory lane. It's probably about 100 feet in. If you look on that plan, you can see there's a proposed cross culvert there. And that high point is real close to that culvert, within about 10 feet. From that point, it, it slopes down uh, and goes back towards the end of the road. So that whole section, oops, excuse me, that whole section uh, is proposed to be draining uh, in that direction. We do have some comments that were received from uh, peer review with regard to stormwater, both water quantity and quality. We have designed the project based on the uh, DEP standards, based on the scope of the project, the size of the project, et cetera, and we'll certainly follow up with Jay and the peer reviewers to discuss that further and look at some alternatives to help uh, address their concerns uh, with regard to stormwater. So, uh, we do have, uh, as I mentioned, uh, a discussion about the septic systems. One of the things that Jay had mentioned was, as part of your evaluation, to determine that it is not feasible uh, for the extension of a public sewer uh, to the site, if you will. We had discussed this quite a bit uh, at the sketch plan review. If you folks recall, we had reached out at that time to the Bonnie Grove Homeowners Association asking for two things. One was to provide a possible 
physical roadway access uh, to the site uh, to provide a connector. You can see that highlighted, um, the location of the end of Bonnie Grove Drive highlighted just under the word subdivision and the heading of that uh, color up. The second was with regard to providing an access to tie into the municipal sewer system. The, the Bonnie Grove uh, Drive is the location where the public sewer system is the nearest to the site. And it would make sense, it would be logical to be able to tie into that system uh, as part of that. And unfortunately, we did receive a letter back uh, from the folks that they did consider it. They met as a homeowners association. And uh, there's a physical gap between the end of the right-of-way, the public right-of-way, on Bonnie Grove Drive and the property that's common open space for that subdivision. And uh, the folks in the homeowners association had uh, indicated that they would not uh, approve either a connection both um, from a sewer standpoint or from a, a roadway standpoint. When the original subdivision was approved, there was an easement that was provided along the side of the road uh, in the event that there might be uh, uh, sewer access, and we would certainly propose that as well uh, as part of our extension, But at this, and that's in our subdivision. Um, at this point, this is about all that we can do uh, with regard to that. We, we certainly understand the frustration on all parties' ends, uh, but that is sort of where we're at. If you also recall from our discussion, we talked a little bit about a nitrate impact evaluation. And we are on public water, which is a little bit different. Usually when you're on septic, you're also on a well. Uh, but we are on a public water system. We would be extending the water line in. We're respectfully asking for a waiver uh, for the nitrate impact evaluation. One of the things that was discussed at the sketch level was the question as to where the nearest well might be. And that well is actually, <coughs> from what we can see, right about here. There are two existing house lots that front on uh, Two Rod Road, right near the overpass. And there is a well that is on that lot I just pointed out there. That well location is about 400 feet from the nearest proposed uh, subsurface disposal system for the project. All the others are certainly further away than that. And there is, as you can see from the plan, so that's on lot one uh, <coughs> would be that system. There's a sizable wetland area that's between that well and the site, and topographically, surface drainage-wise, we're going in the opposite direction. So we respectfully ask that we do uh, have the ability to get a waiver uh, on that particular item. <coughs> the um, <coughs> question was raised about noise abatement, and the question with regard to the uh, noise from the turnpike, if you will. The, if you look closely at the plans, you'll see that there's an, a tree line that shows on the plans. You can see that uh, there's a number of lots sort of in the central core area that are in the open field area. Um, there are some trees on what would be uh, lot four of the subdivision <coughs> on the back side there. Um, but there are a couple of lots that do have sort of an open area. Uh, it also drops off, if you remember, from the sidewalk <coughs> down uh, to the turnpike. One of the things that we had proposed to do uh, in order to mitigate that is to take and, using a tree spade, uh, use some of the existing fairly sizable pines that are uh, on the site in the development area and transplant them down along that edge to try to help um, buffer and soften uh, that section, if you will, uh, from the highway. So that is our proposal on, on noise abatement, if you will. Uh, you'll also recall from the uh, application package, we did have Bill Bray do a full traffic evaluation for the site. Um, Bill has received peer review comments from Goral Palmer. They concurred with all of Bill's findings, which was nice. And uh, so we're uh, hopeful that that is um, satisfactory on all parts with regard to that. There are seven trips with, that would be associated with this project, typical of a residential um, subdivision. Site distance was measured. It well exceeds the minimum required uh, in both directions at the intersection with Memory Lane and Two Rod Road. So uh, sort of the last item uh, that uh, Jay had mentioned was uh, something that came up with regard to the urban legend, or whatever you'd like to call it, 
of a potential burial site uh, on the property. Uh, Marla had highlighted it. There, she had, I believe, a number of them a number of years ago uh, to find in the town, and that was the last remaining one that could not be found. <laughs> and so with the coordinate information that she had based on some of her prior studies on the site, we actually were out there a couple of times last week um, looking around trying to, to find uh, any evidence uh, of any suspect areas. <coughs> any areas that were identified as potential suspect areas based on our coordination and site work with Marla. She was right there. Um, they did some excavation and <coughs> nothing that was found uh, as part of that. So I believe, as Jay mentioned, that is something that is uh, a non-issue at this point uh, for the project. So we're here tonight to talk to you about preliminary subdivision approval. We do have, obviously, the final uh, to go through, um, but we would greatly appreciate the ability to hear your comments and hopefully have a, a positive vote on preliminary. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we do have the chance for a public comment if anyone's <laughs> hiding out there. <clears throat> Seeing none, we'll go right to the board. And does anyone want to start off? Mike? Sure. Um, <clears throat> as always, you've answered uh, all our concerns, or at least my concerns, and what I recall the questions that we had for you last time you were in front of us. So. I don't really have any uh, anything to add. Um, it is unfortunate, of course, that uh, couldn't come to agreement with uh, Bonnie Grove's um, association. But uh, glad to hear that the area tested out well enough for you. Um, this might be kind of a silly question, I, and I can't believe after all these years I haven't really act actually either asked for an official explanation. But the um, lot 14 and the um, challenge to access it that's before you makes me ask why uh, do we always have to have a hammerhead point to the right like that my question uh, no that was my question <laughs> was it what? we didn't used to <laughs> a long time ago but yes that is that is the preferred layout and it is from a plowing perspective that the orientation uh, the layout for that is is mm basically preferred from a, a, a public works and maintenance standpoint is my understanding. So I guess I guess uh, I might just say that if the challenge was um, even more so than what we have in front of us or what <clears throat> Mr. Risbear has in front of him for lot 14 then you could you could possibly propose a hammerhead call it a reverse hammerhead if you will could you not if you wanted to if you if you felt the need that you had to. I'm not sure if that's a a possibility now. I guess I would look to staff um, for that. Right. They could propose it. It would be a waiver of our s typical standards. Mm, okay. Uh, so it's not off the table. But. That's the only thing I have to add. I mean, if I was looking at this, I'd, boy, I'd just hate to think about that driveway for lot 14. I mean, mm -hmm. that's got to be 300 feet or so. I don't know. It's going to be a big plow mm -hmm. bill. Anyway. Mike, I'll ask you, and, and as others weigh in, um, any opinion on the nitrate? Analysis. Oh yes, thank you. I wrote that down. Um, uh, no, I I, um, I I would be in favor of waiving that also because in the nitrate analysis, what are we looking for? A hundred foot separation between subsurface and a well, anyway. That's that's and, typical. Yes. Yeah, and the closest we have here is 400. Correct. And like you say, the flow, the underground flow, is going the opposite direction. All I have is surface flow. Surface but flow. But typically, okay. surface right. flow. Yeah, I, I I would be I'm satisfied with waiving the nitrate. But anyway, those those are only a few comments I have, but thank you very much. I could just add something about the hammerhead flip. Mm. One of the things we do want to keep in mind is we will be asking that the town accept the road. So from a public works maintenance standpoint, we do want to make sure that we're satisfying that in the ask. long term. Ask. Yeah, ask. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Susan? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to go to, just because that was the one thing I wanted to comment on as well. Mm. Ask them. I mean, this is a wetland impact, right? I mean, mm. look at that insane driveway. That's one of the craziest things I've seen since I've been on the planning board. It's insane. And it's, look at the, I mean, if you can't do it, you can't do it. But it just seems like there must be something that can be done about that. That's really, the rest of it's all just stuff. <laughs> I don't care. And you're okay on the nitrate? I'm okay. Uh, uh, nitrate's no problem. Okay, good. May I? <laughs> yes. Um, rule of thumb, it's always on the right. The wing's on the right. It's 
on the white, on the right. Um, I think there have been hammerheads in the past built on the left. Very unpopular. Not, not recently. Not something uh, Public Works has been willing to want to do. Uh, we certainly could ask. I think it would shorten. You know, it would shorten. Definitely, it would would uh, reduce a little bit of wetland impact. Um, so, maybe we'll check with Public Works and see what they have to say. But I know they haven't been too favorable in the past. Can I make a comment on that? I live on Evergreen Farms Road, and the end of Evergreen Farms Road, before the condos, the hammerhead is on the left. Are they happy with that? Not necessarily, but it's mm -hmm. on the left, and they managed to make it happen. You can actually see Bonnie yeah. Grove is on the left. Um, the hammerhead at the... That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Put so, it right on the plan. I mean, it's, it's, as I said, you know, it's... There you go. Public Works what has the their certain the operations, but... You don't ask, you don't get it. That's what I mm -hmm. figure. This is still Scarborough. We can do that. <laughs> <laughs> can I just... What... I guess maybe I'm not seeing the gain. Well, they what, can put the... They okay. can put a driveway up between those... Yes. Well, I think the, the gain might be that the driveway would go between yeah. uh, so you lots basically, 12 and 13. Okay, so I see. So yeah. lot 14 would wrap around those two lots and sort of have an, an, a finger that sticks through. I think that, that could work. It doesn't, I mean, it shortens it some, I guess, and, and drops one, one, of the one wetland crossing, yeah. the bigger of the two. That would be great. If they say no, they say no. They're in charge. Thank you. All set. Thank yep. you. Nick? I'm okay with the waiver on the nitrates. Um, and your noise abatement plan is perfectly fine with me. Good luck. That's it. Thank you. It's short and sweet. Ron? Yeah. Um, I just got a couple of comments. First of all, I want to thank uh, Mr. Espera and uh, the Sinclair staff for uh, taking us out there on that walk. It helped me tremendously. I mean, I... I'm confused anyway, but uh, that would have been ten times more confusing if I hadn't gone out there and, and, and seen that. So that answered a lot of uh, questions for me conceptually. The only thing I guess I missed in your presentation was the was the noise abatement. Did you address that, Nancy? Yes. Would you just refresh my memory? The long and short of it, there are, as you remember from the site walk, there are a number of fairly sizable pine trees. And the proposal would be to tree spade those trees in the areas where the homes would be built, move them down so that they would provide a, a screening buffer, if you will, uh, for noise abatement along the, the turnpike. There are a couple of lots that do have open areas. The last lot on the end, the fourth lot down, does have some wooded area associated with it. But the two, those other two, if you remember from being out in the field there, it's pretty open. It drops off, so those trees will help to provide somewhat of a buffer, but um, Good. it is what it is. <laughs> okay. Good, and I'm also with the nitrate, and that's all I have. Thanks. John? I'm good with the project. Uh, agree with the nitrate waiver not issue there. And just for the public, we talk about wetland fill. We were there like two days after it rained pretty hard, and it really wasn't that bad. I was in sneakers, and I managed to walk through. So it really isn't a big wetland fell, just for the general public and minor. I'm okay with it. All set. Thanks. Thanks. Um, I'm also good with the uh, waiver of the nitrate analysis, and i um, glad to hear that you're willing to go forward with that noise abatement approach. Um, and I'd also like to echo what, what Ron said, and that the, uh, the, the site walk was very helpful. Um, and, and even as I sit here now, six weeks later, however long ago it was, it's still helpful to be able to kind of get, a, get, get your head around what, what's out there and how this all fits together. So, um, so uh, with that, I would uh, move that we grant preliminary site plan approval. It's like pre preliminary subdivision approval mm, to Rosbera Construction Company for an amendment to the, the Burr's subdivision for the addition of seven new residential lots, assessor's map R40, lot one. Second. 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 We have a second. Any discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have a town planner's report? 
Um, yep, two items to report. One, um, just like to note that the town does have a new town engineer, uh, Angela Blanchett, who formerly comes to us uh, by way of SACO, um, has taken over the position. She's been uh, started last week, so she's just entering her second week, and we're excited about her hire and uh, what she brings to the table. Will she be at the transportation meeting? I do not know if uh, she'll be. I'm sure, like Mr. Wendell, when, when her expertise is needed, she'll probably be drawn in. Would you uh, encourage that we have her there? I can, yeah. I can certainly do that. That is all I have to report. Oh, nope, that's a, that's a lie. Um, uh, our August 3rd meeting, have, uh, I will confirm this by email, but it sounds like we're being bumped our location to the high school cafeteria due to the, the third school vote. Um, this room needs to be occupied on the 4th, and um, so we they need to set up for that. So I believe we'll be in the high school cafeteria. I'll confirm it, but just know we'll be somewhere else. Thanks for the heads up. Administrative amendment report. Yep, I actually have three items to report. Um, one has to do with the salt pump climbing gym, as a uh, board member brought up. One of their, the bump outs are uh, a tanner brown than was previously approved. And um, so we've reviewed the colors and they have received administrative approval. The hospice house out on Honeywell has requested a privacy fence along the back side of their building. You might remember that discussion as part of the Leighton Farm, at least mm -hmm. phase one approval. Um, they have provided a rendering of an attractive fence and extensive landscaping there put out back there. So um, that was approved. And finally, uh, you'll remember our last meeting, Fish and Games, Scarborough Fish and Game was before you for an advisory opinion for a couple of sheds and an expansion of one of their um, discipline houses there, so so to speak, um, and the chairman reviewed. It did receive its Board of Appeals approval after your advisory opinion and has subsequently received a administrative approval. Those are the items I have. Thank you. Any planning board correspondence beyond what we were given this evening? Okay. Planning board comments? Yeah, Corey uh, and Jay, on that... Um possibility of being bumped or maybe I guess that's pretty much a foregone conclusion yep. it, is it um, is it possible to reschedule our meeting for like the next day or whatever I, I'm not sure what would be uh, involved in lo relocating us and we've done it in the past it's not yeah we have um, when we've had to yeah, yeah. Um, okay. yeah. It, I think at this point with it being three weeks away um, yeah trying to bump our meeting given our sort of application submissions deadlines might be. So there's a lot of, yeah, okay. If we knew further in advance that this was an annual thing, you know, if we were trying to bump into, say, the November elections that we know are going to occur, this is certainly a third time. Why can't they go vote down there? <laughs> I'm just I, I'm lower on the totem we're, pole. We're working, than, on, <laughs> we're working on making it an annual thing. Okay. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Okay. Um, so noted. I, mean, I hope we don't have a conflict in November. I know. I hope this is the last conflict, right? Right. Uh, I have one one housekeeping note, and I've I've given a heads up to a few folks already, but I will not be here for the August third meeting, so everyone can look forward to Mr. Mazer running the show for that one. Should be a short meeting. <laughs> At the high school. Anything else? I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Good news. I said two hours to my wife.